Hi, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this uh, little video series I'm putting together, we were docked at the ISS and we undocked and we're transferring out to the moon so that we can land at Brighton Beach. In the last video, we did a couple of different mid-course corrections and did our um, orbit insertion around the moon. And I feel very clumsy. I definitely don't feel, you know, like I have experience, which is understandable. Again, this is only my second uh, video that I've made after being away from Orbiter for six years. But when I went to the ISS in the first series, I felt pretty good about what I was doing, other than a couple of mistakes. Um, but in this part, coming out to the moon, I definitely am feeling the lack of experience setting in. I feel extremely clumsy. Uh, with all that said, let's go ahead and switch camera views and get back into things and try to uh, try to land. So we're uh, so here is Brighton Beach, and we're over here moving away from Brighton Beach. So we're going to have to complete an orbit uh, before we'll be able to land, but that's okay because we need at least we need at least one orbit to get everything else squared away that we need to have set up. So let's bring up uh, base sync MFD and let's target Brighton Beach and it shows that uh, our distances are so close that we don't really even need to worry about it. So in fact I may not even bother but uh, let's set our length to one because we're really only going to have one orbit. Um, we can, in fact, do a bit of a correction when we're uh, a quarter of the way around. That's the ideal time to make any um, corrections that we want to make with our off-base distance. And I think... Do we want equator or direct? I don't remember. Let's go with direct. And I'm just going to warp time forward until I'm at that line right there. And then we would just want a bit of up-down translation to correct any of our off-base distance. And honestly, it would probably be, bit, probably be better to do it over here because that'll have us closer to the base. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to at least start refining it at this point. So about right here. And oh, I got rotation on. So I need to switch over to translation. Translation. And that's going the wrong way. So if I just bump the translation thrusters, you can see our our distance is uh, you know coming down. And it 160 meters doesn't make a difference, but you know, just one of those things. We 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 can correct it a little bit, so let's go ahead and correct it. Um, but it really doesn't make a lot of difference when you're that close especially because we're not landing like on the dead center of the base, we're landing on one of the pads. Uh, so actually with that in mind, it's not a terrible time to go ahead and set up our comm nav. So I'm going to press control I to bring up the object info and then go to the base and we're going to select Brighton Beach, which for some reason is all the way down at the bottom. And we want the, uh, the long range on nav one. So we'll set that at uh, 116. So we'll just probably go backwards will be faster or rather no forwards to wrap around 11630 so that has a range of 500 kilometers and then on nav 2 we'll set up any of the landing pads that's free and you can see landing pad 1 is not free let's uh, just for fun let's target pad um, 2 I guess it's available so 132.30 and so, uh, so we have our we have our com nav set up. So that's one less thing we have to worry about later on. Okay, now uh, I have to think. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, we're not using arrow break. We're on the moon, so we don't have to worry about that. So I think all we have to do is get halfway around from the base, and then we want to lower the other side of our orbit so that it's essentially down at the surface or close to it. So let me bring up base sync 
and just let me think for a moment. Does this give us the distance to the base? Distance two point. Okay, so this is this does give us the distance, and so does a uh, map. So usually what I would do is I would go essentially halfway around the planet or the moon essentially, and then when I would see the distance stop increasing, and then it would start decreasing. That's when I know I'm halfway around. Um, and we can kind of get a general idea from the from the visual as well. Um, how many squares are there? So there's one, two, three, four, five in that direction. One, two, three, four, five, six in that direction. So I'm guessing like right as we get in here, we're halfway. But um, let's go to the retrograde position because this is going to be to be a we're going to be decreasing the other side of our orbit. So let's work time forward a little bit. So our number is still going up, up, up. We want to watch our time warp so that we don't overshoot this tremendously. And we should be getting close to that halfway point. I don't remember what the readout is, but we're down to 10. So we're just going to keep it at 10x so we can keep an eye on that distance because I don't want to overshoot drastically. We're probably using this method, we're probably going to overshoot a little bit. But uh, it won't be by much. Okay, our numbers are now going down, so we're halfway around. So let's um, let me actually pause for a moment. Let me bring up. I guess I can't bring it up while I have. And now I'm just going to bring down my PEA. Uh, now, Orbiter d did introduce uh, collisions and stuff, so I'm not sure how much I want to bring it down. Let's uh, let's go three kilometers. Normally, I would bring that down to just like 200 meters or something, but uh, with with the fact that we now have terrain in Orbiter 2016, I know I'm really late to the party on all of this, but uh, the, I could potentially bring down my orbit so low that I end up running into a mountain. Don't really want to do that if I can avoid it. So we'll plan on arriving at Brighton Beach with an altitude of, you know, three and a quarter kilometers. Hopefully that's enough. I honestly don't know if it is. Um, it'll be a spectacular collision if I'm wrong. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, warp time forward to this point over here. And we'll do, if we feel like it, we'll do a bit of a distance correction. It does suck that I'm going to land with the lights all off. Yeah, I don't see any reason to do any kind of a distance correction because, you know, we're so close to the center of the base that, you know, 8 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters, 500 meters for that matter, it just isn't enough to mess with. So I'm going to say we're done with base sync and we're going to bring up um, the VOR, VTOL on the left side and we're going to make sure that our nav is nav 1 in this will come online when we're 500 kilometers from the base. So let's warp time forward until we get to that point. We don't want to overshoot that by much. Uh, I believe we need to start our braking burn somewhere around 80 kilometers out. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll use burn time calculator. Okay, so this has come online. And, you know, you can see we're 470 kilometers from the base. So I'm going to go ahead now and start bringing the vessel uh, wings level with the ground. Because eventually we're going to, you know, put down the landing gear and settle down and we don't want to be sideways to the planet when we do that. Rotation. And let's bring... Now one thing I do want to remember is that that V-O-R-V-T-O-L is the radio beacon like at the dead center of Brighton Beach and that's not where we're landing. We're landing on landing pad 1. But we won't get the information... I should say landing pad 2. But we won't get the information we need from landing pad 2 until we're I think 20 or 25 kilometers. Um, so let's bring up 
burn time calculator and start trying to figure out how to use this MFD. Let me go all the way down to 0 0.1. Uh, if I have to manually break, I'll do it, but I, I, I know for sure I'm able to input the information I have over here into burn time calculator to give me much better time estimates. I just have to remember how to do what I want to do. So the mode. So time to periapsis is not what I want. Time to, that's not what I want. And I don't want transex. Do I have to shut transex off? Do I still have transex on? I don't. Um, so what I what I'm trying to remember how to do is you would input. Was it DV? I would input the the distance target delta V times manual start. So what is what is this? No, that's not what I want. Um, so let's reset. I think that just does reset. Arm get. Extra, no, page over, what's on this page? So, yeah, I remember I would put in, I believe I would put in the velocity that I was currently at, and it would tell me when to begin that burn. Um, enter delta V, no, because I don't know what it is. So, okay, I'm probably not going to be able to use this for what I'm trying to do at the moment because I just, I don't remember how to use it. Time, time. Okay, all right, we're not going to do this apparently. That's unfortunate. I thought I would remember how to use this. Burn, that probably starts the burn. I can't remember. So we'll go ahead and go back to regular time. And when we're around 100 meters out, we're uh, probably actually even maybe a little bit closer than that, maybe about 90, meter, uh, 90 kilometers out, rather, we'll begin our braking burn. And we'll do it manually unless I remember how to do things between now and then. Um, yeah, I think... I was thinking you would put in the distance and it would tell you how long it would take to bring that distance down to zero. Because maybe it's this one, uh, 260. No, that's, that's just when it's going to start. And then DV, that's not distance. No. MD Hmm Yeah, I cannot remember There's just not a lot of options here So I would think That it would be fairly obvious What's ST? Okay, that's clearly not what I want So reset, alright Unfortunate uh, But let's go ahead and uh, just continue on like I was saying before. So when we get down to around 90 kilometers, and the reason I'm choosing that number is because I know it's something like 75 that you need, 75 to 80 kilometers. So maybe it's 65 to, to get slowed down to the point that you're absolutely over Brighton Beach. But I'm just going to start it a little bit early so that I have time. All right, so 90, let's go 85. All right, so now we're begin beginning our burn. And, yeah, we're not going to be able to see anything. I, okay, in our velocity, our vertical speed is starting to, starting to increase, so we are starting to fall at this point. So eventually we're going to have to turn on the hover engines. And... We can switch over to nav too. We can probably just have that on now, just so we don't forget to do it later. And I think it comes online when we're 25 kilometers out. Yeah, 25 kilometers. 
All right, so we're horizontal speed is still 900 meters. Uh, we're falling, but not super duper fast. Let's go ahead and put in some hover though, because it's making me nervous to uh, to fall and have to pay attention to these other things. I think I started it too late. <laughs> Yep, definitely started it too late. So we're overshooting the base significantly, unfortunate. So I guess it was not 90 or... 4, Let's uh, increase our hover, because we're actually overshooting. We've overshot the base, so we're actually going to have to go back. Super sloppy. Man, we've overshot by 10 kilometers. How far off was I? Oh boy, we need lots of hover. All right, we're climbing. Okay, now we're going back to the base because I'm a moron and I overshot it. And we don't want to have too much velocity going back to the base because everything we put in we have to take back out. Super sloppy. Rotation. Okay. So I'm trying to offset a little bit. Um, I'm, let me think about this. a little bit more. Okay, I actually chose the right direction. And let's take out some hover. Translation. And let's get this back up so that we're moving in the we're moving exactly towards the landing pad. Okay, so we're six kilometers out. Alright, we're starting to fall again, so we need to pay attention to that. I think I'm actually going to take an absolute beginner approach here. I'm going to do uh, hold altitude so that I don't have to concentrate on that part of it. And I'm just going to move myself over top of the landing pad and then I'll deal with uh, the hover later. This is extremely inefficient, but you know, too much time has passed. I have to be a bit sloppy about things. So we are moving in the correct direction. I guess we can switch over to surface at this point. Doesn't really matter. We're only moving at 36 meters a second, but that's pretty comfortable because it, from using the retro engines, I can tell they're strong enough to take that velocity back out. Whereas if I were moving, you know, like 200 meters a second, uh, the retro engines wouldn't be powerful enough. I would overshoot again and then have to come back. So. So, but I think I want to keep in that horizontal speed that I have a little bit longer. Maybe when we get down to two kilometers, I'll take out some of it. And I think I'm going to turn off the altitude hold just for a moment and just let myself fall for a little bit. And let's take out a little bit of that velocity. So yeah, those engines are powerful enough that we uh translation. Rotation. Translation. Let's try to line up. Rotation. I can tell I'm a bit off again. Okay, so we're two and a half kilometers out from the center of the pad, and we're falling at uh a little bit. Let's put in just a bit of hover. 5, Still falling nice and relatively slow. Translation. Rotation. OK, 
Okay, let's take out a bit of our forward. Four thousand. Let's put down our landing gear before we forget. I'm just curious. I don't like to rely on the external view or anything, but I'm just curious. Wanted to take a look. Okay, let's put in a bit more hover. Okay, that's going to have us ascending, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. But once the vertical speed gets to like 10 or something, we'll take some hover back out. So we're uh, one kilometer away from the center of the pad. So let's take out just a bit more forward. Three thousand. Three thousand. So we're seven hundred meters away from the center of the pad. Translation. Let's translate just a bit this way. Looks like I can tell Rotation. we're a little off. Okay, and mm, we'll, we'll keep that horizontal speed for now. Take out a little bit more hover. Take out a little bit more hover. Okay, we'll slow things down a little bit. Okay, slow things down substantially. Rotation translation. Okay, so the goal at the moment is to get over the center of the pad and then try to null things out, and then we will. Two thousand. And then we'll concentrate. Then we can switch to just concentrating on lowering down without crashing into the pad. Okay, so we're we're good. Uh, so let's let's just kind of leave. Let me try to get. Okay, so my horizontal speed is technically zero, but uh, it's probably going to fluctuate a little bit. We're really close to the center of the pad, so let's not worry about that at the moment. We are falling a bit too fast for landing, but we need to get down, and we still got a kilometer to go down. So we're going to continue falling at this rate until we're a bit closer to the ground. And I, again, I'm not relying on the external view, but just out of curiosity, I want to take a look. But you should be able to complete your entire flight without ever looking at the outside. And if you can't do that, it's not a simulator. It's a it's something that's not a simulator. Which is kind of one of the reasons I never really like Kerbal all that much. It seems like you can't do anything in that game without going external and looking at all these like spreadsheet screens. I'm just trying to slow down my descent a little bit. Okay, let's take a quick look. And just slowing down my drop a little bit more. That way when we get close to the ground I have really tight control over how fast I'm falling. Burning a lot of fuel to do this. <laughs> Wheels are down, horizontal level is on, might actually take out just a touch of hover. So 
Sorry if I'm being overly quiet, but I'm super concentrating right now. One hundred. So we're really close to touchdown here. We're really dead center on the pad. Seventy-five. We're falling in just a nice controllable one point eight. And when I need to, I can just tap two to slow things down a little bit. With the linear translation. And as soon as we get wheels down, we want to. 40. Alright, I don't want to mess with the distance on the pad at the moment. It's bothering me that it's now drifting a bit, but. 20. Okay, let's slow down to a meter. 15. Slow things down. We almost two, have wheels down. One. Alright, take out the hover immediately. Turn off the level horizon. We got wheel stop. Hit our brakes just to be sure. And that is a successful landing. And good timing too, because uh, we're coming up on 30 minutes for this video, which is the outer limit of how long I like to make them. And uh, yeah, we landed pretty well on our target. I mean, zero point zero anything uh, is more than good enough if you're within I believe it's 10 or 15 meters of the landing pad you're you're on the landing pad and that is a that is definitely a success so I'm pretty happy with the way all this turned out uh, felt really sloppy with those mid course corrections but otherwise but otherwise things felt pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the simulation here switch back over to the full view and I think that's going to uh, wrap it up for this little mini-series. I think this was also three parts. So um, what I'm thinking I might do is I might uh, save this scenario and then pick up right where we are here and go and do something else. Not quite sure what that'll be. And again, it may never happen. I may not make another video for six years. I, I don't no promises at this point. But it's been really awesome getting back into Orbiter these last few days definitely having a lot of fun uh, refreshing my memories so if you like what you if you like what you see here please do hit that like button and I will see you in the next video if there is one